Welcome back to the NCBI podcast. My name is Katie and I'm Communications Executive. Today we're joined by Lena Cousy, who is Head of Library Access Services for NCBI. Welcome, Lena. Hello, Katie. Nice to see you again. You too. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk a bit about the library and the work that the library does. So, uh, Lena, what does your role entail in... Um, um, yes, Katie, I, I'm the head of library access services, so I, I look after uh, the whole uh, library uh, section, um, and that includes the production side and the distribution uh, side of library services, um, as well as the area of uh, making the print word accessible. So the, there are a few areas that I, I uh, oversee and look after within um, the library service um, and the library production and the library distribution side of things. So we have quite a, a number of roles, quite a number of remits within um, the library. Um, and the, the main one being uh, production and distribution um, of, of books. Um, so we produce books in accessible formats. Uh, the, the Braille titles, uh, large print, uh, audio in the various formats. So um, when you say production and distribution of it, you, you're you looking at um, managing people who write books into Braille and record them and everything like that up, up in the library. Is that right? That's right, uh, Katie. We, we have over uh, four and a half thousand uh, library members that use the service. It's a national service. So we look after people in, all over Ireland um, that uh, would be borrowing books from us on a regular basis. Um, the books go out. There's two ways that the books go out from our library. Uh, one of them is through the postal, the free postal service. And the other one is through the uh, digital platforms that we operate uh, from NCBI Library access. So um, there are two methods that the books go out, uh, postal and digital. In the last um, year, everything's kind of gone online and become a bit more... Um, Absolutely, more uh, sort of uh, reliant on the digital platforms. Um, although our library didn't actually close throughout COVID, we were the only library in the country that continued to operate and continued to send out books in accessible formats to our library members all over Ireland. So, um, uh, yes, our library didn't close and we sent out books um, continuously. Um, and also our digital platform was extremely busy because, as you can imagine, um, our Bookshare Ireland platform was launched in November 2019, which was just a few months before COVID um, hit. And um, our students that were using the platform were totally reliant on uh, Bookshare Ireland to access their curriculum, students in higher education, because um, their college is closed, the libraries in the college is closed, they had ac didn't have any access to their books. And our Bookshare Ireland platform is really their only way of accessing their titles in a digital format. Um, the turnaround is very quick. It's instant access for any student um, in higher education. All they had to do was just register and log in onto the platform and download the book in the format of their choice. Um, that particular uh, digital platform, Bookshare Ireland, now holds over 700,000 titles in the various accessible formats. So you're looking at 700,000 titles uh, plus um, every single accessible format, um, which would be Braille Ready File, Word, PDF, EPUB, DAISY and DAISY with images. So if you do the multiplication 700,000 by six formats, you're looking at over 4 million titles available instantly to anyone looking for books. Um, the beauty of Bookshare Ireland is uh, that the publishers, um, international and national publishers, have signed up to share their titles on the platform. So what, what do we mean by sharing their titles? They actually send them um, on a secure channel to the platform um, and they get uh, produced then or ingested is the word that we use into the various accessible formats um, ready for our service users to start downloading um, and enjoying their titles. And that's just one one part of NCBI library, I suppose, Bookshare. It's probably is, yeah. the most uh, recent um, development in, in the NCBI library. But what, what other things are you guys, I suppose, you've been 
working with as well. Like the, the traditional yeah. library services as well, Katie, we, we have um, the traditional library books, what, what we classify as traditional library services would be our Braille books, um, our CD audio books, our books on USB key and our large print books. And they go out as free post for the blind or service users and then they're returned back to the library. So again, uh, throughout COVID, our service was very busy with people uh, isolating and cocooning um, and not being able to, to leave their homes for for sometimes days on end. Um, the only person that they, they saw would be the postman delivering their books um, to their doorstep. And in rural Ireland, what's happened as well is that um, the postman collected the books from many of our clients who weren't able to leave their homes um, because of the pandemic. So, um, you know, the, the postal service was heavily used, the free post service was heavily used um, throughout the, the, the pandemic and throughout COVID. And we, um, you know, it was a very, very busy service during that period. And again, the public libraries were all closed and people didn't have access to any reading material. Um, so it was an essential service that we managed to keep going through a very difficult time. Um, how do you join NCBI Library? Do you have to have a visual impairment or uh, have sight loss to join NCBI Library? Uh, yes, to join the um, traditional library services, yes, you, you need to be registered as blind or vision impaired. But for our digital library service, Bookshare Ireland, um, we follow the, the rules around the, the Marrakesh Treaty, um, which um, uh, states that individuals who have a reading difficulty, um, such as a dyslexia, or have a, a, a difficulty in reading print because of a physical disability, mm -hmm. um, they can access uh, Bookshare Ireland, the digital platform. Um, and we, we need some extra verification, either from the Dyslexia Association of Ireland or um, a GP uh, or an educational psychologist, just to say that this person, yes, cannot read print um, because of their disability. When I joined NCBI um, about 20 years ago, the only medium that we used was Braille um, and also the cassette medium. And in the last 10 years or so, things have changed drastically. And we've moved to the digital platforms, uh, mm -hmm. which has been a fantastic way for our service users to access books quickly. They're not relying on um, the post, the postman delivering or collecting. Um, they have instant access to their material, to their reading material um, with their assistive technologies. So all they need is a PC internet connection and they really have access to our collections very quickly. Um, so things have changed and changed for the better for our library service and for our service users as well. How old is NCBI Library? NCBI Library is actually older than NCBI itself. It, it dates back to the late 19th century um, when it was first created. It was part of the RNIB library service in the country. And um, the first collection of Braille books that we have in our library date back to 1922 and 1923 uh, would be a set of books that we have in Braille uh, in our library service. The same um, set of books is avail also available in the National Library uh, in, in, in Dublin um, as well. But uh, we have them and they're in beautiful Braille, in beautiful condition. The Braille is in, is in perfect, pristine condition. Mm -hmm. um, and I love to show them off to visitors when they come into the library to see um, our, our Braille service or our library service. Um, they're available in our archive for viewing only. I wouldn't lend them out to anybody, but you, you're more than welcome to come up and have a look at them at some point. I'd love that, yeah. Um, so I suppose you kind of touched on it there a minute ago, but um, what do you think has been the, the reason for the large increase in um, new library service users coming to the service in the last few years? Um, do you think it's it's because it's gone more digital or do you think it's better advertising or? I think it's a, a little bit of everything. You know, it, it's because we've moved to the digital platform, access is now so much easier for those that um, prefer a digital platform to get the reading material. Also, um, you know, the marketing, um, the, the actual uh, service has been really important as well and opening our doors to other 
um, service users like individuals with reading difficulties such as dyslexia or those who have a physical disability that stops them from accessing print. That has opened the doors and uh, extended um, who we actually offer our services to. In the past, um, we didn't have that. Um, we just did not have uh, the digital content to be able to offer that service to anyone else. But now, um, because we can, um, with the Marrakesh Treaty, was a, a big a game changer for us um, uh, in, in our distribution and in our uh, remit uh, in, in reaching uh, clients and, and library members. Mm, yeah, it's it's such a massive, um, I suppose there was a huge gap in the market for that, especially yeah. for university students. And we heard from the likes of Aoife Watson when uh, Bookshare was launched, how important it would have been for her to be able to access books like that. So it is, it's, it's incredible um, to think that that wasn't a service available beforehand. No. Um, where do you see the library going in the next, I don't know, 10 years? Um, that's a very interesting question, Katie, because the, the digital side of things is continuously moving. It's not a static. It's not that, yes, we've got a digital platform and that's it. Mm -hmm. That is continuously moving. And what I see happening in the future with our library service in the near future, actually, and not in 10 years time, is that we'll be moving to more digital um, delivery um, methods. Um, and by that, I mean uh, accessing books, say, through a, an Alexa the Alexa hub um, so a service user could con call Alexa and ask for um, a book from our library service and that will be available to them um, when they want it 24-7 uh, you know so that the library is there uh, very easy to access and um, available to them and that's something I believe will be happening soon with our uh, with our uh, developments around the, the digital hubs that we're uh, working with in NCBI. Mm -hmm. But um, in the long run, I think the, the digital platforms are going to take off even more and we're going to be looking at um, digital accessibility for library services more and more uh, rather than re the reliance on the traditional method of delivery of books to individuals who are uh, blind and vision impaired. Um, i.e. through the, the, the postal service. Um, I think the, the reliance on that is going to slow down and we're going to be seeing more and more usage around the digital platforms and assistive technologies assist, um, attached to that. Yeah, um, you, you said there about um, the more kind of traditional forms of um, what was what would have been accessed within NCBI library and things like Braille, how many people would you have availing of, um, you know, the, the newspapers in Braille or books in Braille? Yeah, uh, in the library? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, our, our smallest uh, number of library users would be Braille readers, um, Katie. We have registered on with our library membership, we have 200, uh, approximately 200 individuals that are registered using the Braille, uh, using the Braille library service, the traditional Braille library service. Now you can access digital Braille files um, through the Bookshare Ireland platform. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by digital Braille files is someone can download a book in digital Braille and use something like the Orbit uh, to read their Braille books. So you're, you're cutting out paper, paper Braille completely and focusing on um, a digital platform uh, to produce and deliver a Braille book. Uh, so you're not taking anything away from the reading, but you're just taking away um, the, the paper format as such in, in Braille production. It's a fantastic way of delivering a Braille book very quickly to a client, to a library member. Absolutely. Do you think that there'll be emphasis put on um, preserving Braille as a um, form of communication within Absolutely. the next Absolutely. Braille is really essential, um, especially for young children going through the education system. Um, if you do not have Braille skills, you're very limited to what you can do later on in college and even in, in your on a work capacity. Um, Braille is really important for communications, for writing, for reading, for grammar, um, for uh, doing maths. Um, for you know any subject that you might want to do later on in college, even um, if you don't, if you're relying totally on audio, you're really um, cutting out a lot of opportunity 
that might be available to the child. Um, so Braille, if a child needs Braille, it's really important that they do um, start off at a young age and go through the education system learning Braille. And you, as you said, in the education system, you guys introduced um, with with the help of Lego uh, last year, I think it was um, Lego Braille. And you offer education on that, don't you, from a, a school's point of view? Absolutely, Katie. Um, we started off last year. Um, we signed a contract with uh, Lego in Denmark to introduce Lego Braille Bricks in Ireland as a way of learning Braille through fun. It's a fun way of, mm-hmm. of teaching and learning Braille. Um, and we ran training courses with visiting teachers um, across the country. And uh, most schools have Lego Braille Bricks, those that need them, and the children that need them have them now. But we're con- continuously doing... Um, uh, more training with the teachers in conjunction with the uh, with the Lego Braille Foundation in Denmark as well, um, and we're constantly uh, talking to them and updating our training with them. And has there been a good response for uh, that? A huge response, a huge response, and um, the Lego Braille um, we see it nearly. Every time we're talking to parents that have children that are learning Braille, they are delighted with it as a way of them um, learning and interacting with Braille. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, it makes sense. You learn through fun and everyone loves Lego. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. it, it, it's fantastic. And uh, just um, a, a little piece of information, they're actually free of charge for any child that needs needs them. There, there's no charge at all. Um, right. The Lego Foundation has, has um, insisted and confirmed that um, all children it's not just in Ireland, around the globe that need them, mm-hmm. um, that are Braille learners will get a, a set through their school free of charge. That's brilliant. And and the education as well, I'm, I assume, is is uh, can be avail- availed of free of charge too. Absolutely. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, regarding um, Braille and um, accessible formats for um, readers within the library, have you guys been involved in much um, with the communications around COVID-19 and the government's response to it? Yes, Katie, we, we've been in the forefront um, on, in production, um, in producing actually the uh, vaccination information leaflets for the HSE. Um, we pre- update them and produce the, all the vaccine information leaflets for them on a regular basis because there's updates happening uh, sometimes on a daily and sometimes on a weekly basis uh, for these vaccines. Um, so the aftercare leaflet and the main vaccine uh, information leaflet for the four vaccines that have been approved in Ireland. Uh, we've done all the work on the audio and the braille and the large print. And they're available on the HSE website. They're updated, as I said, regularly, and they're available through our library service for anyone that wants a, a copy in an accessible format um, delivered to their home. We can send that on to them uh, through the free post. Uh, so that's work that we're continuously doing, and we've been doing it since the beginning of the year, since the vaccine rollout started um, with the HSC, and it will continue right on, I would say, till September, October, until um, the, the majority of the population is vaccinated. Really brilliant. And it's something that I think people don't think about when, when you know, the general public, that things like this need to be made accessible for everyone, you know, when it's when it's affecting every person in society. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So we 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 um we're working very closely with them, um and you know it's not just the HSC. We do have a production unit here, as I mentioned earlier on earlier on in the introduction, um that we produce um documents in accessible formats, um we provide them in 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 the braille and the audio and the large print, and we do a, a lot of work for government departments as well, uh, and the private sector. So if anyone's looking for, um documents, books, leaflets, whatever, to be produced in accessible format to come through to us. And we're more than happy to advise and produce um, documents for them. That's really, it's a really amazing service. Um, And not just that, uh, I've spoken to service users in the past who get their weekly magazines or their quarterly magazines um, in the post in a USB cable or stick. um, And they're able to keep up with whether it's the Farmer's Journal or Ireland's own or 
you've a, a huge amount of titles that you guys um audio Absolutely. that we produce an audio and um uh, we actually today i just got um the irish country magazine it's a beautiful magazine the editor sends it on to me and okay. um, every quarter when it's produced and we pro produce that in braille and in audio it's one of the only magazines really uh, apart from the ncbi insight magazine it's one of the only ones that we produce in braille uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's lovely articles uh, that are in it um, and we send it out to our service users but the audio side of things for the magazines yes we have a suite of publications that we produce uh, in audio and send out on usb key to clients all over the country um, and anything from the, the irish times which we produce once a week and ex extracts from the irish times for that week um, to Women's Own, uh, Ireland's Own, Ireland's Eye, The Phoenix, a whole suite of uh, really uh, interesting and great magazines that we, we work with. It's really fantastic. Um, um, Alina, it was so lovely to speak to you and learn more about the library. Um, where can people get more information or um, get information about joining the, the NCBI library? Yeah, um, if, if anyone would like to join the NCBI library, they could email the library at ncbi.ie or they could go to the Bookshare Ireland platform and sign up there. There's a sign up button at the very base of that page. Um, if they want to ring us, our telephone number is Dublin 864-2266. And there's more information about our library service on the NCBI website as well. Uh, that's www.ncbi.ie. Also, if you want to call our info line on 1850 33 43 53, you can get more information about NCBI Library there. It was lovely to speak to you, Lena. Thank you so much for taking the time. No problems, Katie. We will be back uh, soon with another podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Take care. Bye bye.